All right, so it looks like it's time to get started. Welcome to another OpenShift Commons briefing, everybody. Your usual host, Diane Mueller, is helping a bunch of kids learn about the outdoors of British Columbia. So I am your guest host for today. Um, today, we're going to have a briefing on some of the work happening inside of Red Hat on an operational dashboard for OpenShift V3 and Kubernetes. Uh, Kubernetes is underneath both OpenShift, well, it's underneath OpenShift, and Julie, Julie Lim and Serena Doyle have been working on creating a single pane to manage both for all your operational needs. So I'm going to turn over the rest of the presentation to Julie Lim and Serena. Um, they've asked that you hold questions until they ask for them. Uh, if you have a question while they're in the middle of talking, though, one or the other will be monitoring the chat session. So go ahead and put your questions in there and uh, take it away. So thank you, Steve, and um, good day to everybody, and thank you for joining us in our operational dashboard for OpenShift v3 and Kubernetes briefing. And my name is Julem, and I have here with me Serena Doyle, and we're part of the Red Hat User Experience Design Team, and thank you for joining us today. So without further ado, I'll jump right in. Um, what we're going to talk about today is give you a quick overview about some of the underlying technologies and some of the ways we're approaching how we're going to actually monitor or operationalize the management of OpenShift V3 and Kubernetes. And as Steve mentioned, if you have questions, we will be pausing throughout the presentation and feel free to also use chat during that time. So, just in case folks aren't aware, um, OpenShift V3 is an on-premise version of Red Hat's PaaS, and it's built on top of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And it's built around the central idea of being able to run applications built in Docker containers and um, being able to run them on top of OpenShift. And the notion behind this is we'll use Kubernetes, which is a technology that Google open source in order to schedule and orchestrate the containers. And um, one of the things that folks are using this technology for is to improve um, their DevOps or development in the enterprise or in any kind of on-premise or public cloud environment. If you're interested in getting started with OpenShift, um, please take a look at that URL and uh, take a look at it. Um, I'm going to jump briefly and then dive in. So Kubernetes is an open source orchestration system for Docker containers in a clustered environment. And as mentioned, it's going to handle the scheduling of the nodes within the cluster and actively manage the containers and other entities in order to make sure that the cluster matches what the users intended. And again, there's a link there if you'd like more information about it. And, and more, where we're going to spend a lot of our time today is around um, a technology called Manage IQ. Now, Manage IQ is the upstream um, project that Red Hat has around providing best of breed management across multiple environments whether it's virtualiz virtualization, cloud, or a containerized environment. For OpenShift v3, there are two consoles. For the operator or the administrator, we are providing the operations console for actually managing your OpenShift v3 and Kubernetes workloads from Manage IQ. And from a downstream or from a Red Hat perspective, the Red Hat branded um, version of Manage IQ is CloudForm. So if you look at that picture that you see on the left, I mean, sorry, on the right, <laughs> um, it basically shows that whether you're in a um, bare metal environment, a virtualized environment, or a cloud environment, and the cloud could be with an open stack, it could even be AWS or um, Google or any of the other clouds that are supported that run containerized workloads, you should be able to use um, Manage IQ or CloudForms to manage these workloads. Uh, let me jump ahead. So some of the different concepts with regards to OpenShift and Kubernetes to keep in mind is that in a containerized environment that's clustered, 
um, you have a whole bunch of different entities. Um, these include containers, images, namespaces, or projects, the nodes or the machines that are actually running the pods and containers, and pods are basically groups of containers. Um, some of these concepts that you see on the screen are basically some of the different components that will be managing from a manage IQ or cloud forms perspective. And it'll become a little bit more evident as we share with you some of our proof of concept that we're about to share with you. Um, so as mentioned, what we're planning to share with you are some design concepts. We have a running prototype that Serena is going to show with you, show you, and what we'd like to invite from you is any kind of feedback or thoughts that you have on what we're about to share with you today. And I'm just, questions. I'm, thank you. I'm going to pause and see if anyone has any questions. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? Sorry, I'm not okay. able to see. Nope, not yet. Okay. So, just <laughs> okay. noting, yeah. If anybody wants to ask questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Otherwise, we're going to continue on and switch off. Uh, I'm going to start sharing. Yep. So before you go there, let me just uh, briefly talk about some of the use cases we're going to show. As I mentioned earlier, we have the ability with Manage IQ to manage the whole OpenShift v3 and Kubernetes environment. Now, from a management perspective, this is the full life cycle of your con application containers, everything from being able to deploy all the way to troubleshooting it and retiring it. Today, we are going to focus on the monitoring set of use cases. And what I mean by that, we're not going to be doing any kind of active management of provisioning or deployments, but rather we're going to focus on taking a look at the health, the status of the OpenShift v3 and Kubernetes entities, the health of the cluster, the state of it, the relationships of it, how a container connects to a pod, to a node, to the underlying infrastructure, um, utilization type information, and being able to identify issues in the environment. And um, now I'm going to actually turn it over to Serena to share with you our prototype. Okay, great. Stop oh, sorry. Yeah. Yes. Um, and once again, if you have any questions, please feel free to use the chat. Okay, so I'm just going to start this off with uh, et cetera, is not uh, appropriate or is not in, in working mode right now or how it will be released. Essentially, what we have is this is um, a prototype of what Manage IQ's you know, navigation scheme is currently when containers would be uh, dropped into it. And the, the operational dashboards that I'm showing you are essentially what we have designed for the first deliverable of cloud forms, um, first deliverable of containers and cloud forms. Uh, and as Drew mentioned, we're trying to get feedback and validation with customers and then in the coming months um, to see if we can enhance it. We are limited by what's currently supported by Kubernetes at this point though. So um, there are a lot of things that I think Drew mentioned in the use cases, which we will be doing at further date, but some of those things we're limited to and can't provide those right now. Um, <clears throat> so just to give you uh, a quick overview of the global dashboard. This is looking at your entire environment, so any of the container-related related objects in your environment. So the top piece up, I'm going to show with my mouse. You can see my mouse right in here. You're not sharing it. I'm not sharing. No. Shows me that I'm sharing. Um, oh, I can see your mouse. I can see your mouse can moving. See, can you see the dashboard as well? Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. So. Um, <laughs> The top, the, there's about two, four, there's nine cards on the top, on um, the top strip, I would call them. And essentially what they are, um, they're cards just trying to give you a quick overview of the container related objects in your environment. So the first card on your left says that there's three providers currently in your environment. We have one that's an OpenShift and two Kubernetes providers. All of these things um, will be able, you can drill down into each of these items. So if you not in the prototype, but in the product, you'll be able to. So you'd be able to 
drill down into your single provider that's over OpenShift, or you can drill down into your two Kubernetes um, providers. The next two cards are nodes and pods. So there's 52 nodes in this environment, and three of which, three with the icon, air icon next to it, means there's three nodes that have issues. We'd be able to, um, you would be able to drill down into those and see the three specific nodes with issues as well in the product. Same thing we have with pods. At this point, we only have nodes and pods which are able to report back that they have errors or substatus. So the rest of the six cards, which are containers, services, registries, images, projects, and routes, all we're able to do at this point for the first release is just say how many of those object types exist in your environment. So I'm going to pause for a moment. And um, Dean Richardson had a question asking if this is Cloudform's functionality anticipated for 3.1 or later release. And our understanding that it's currently being planned for the 4.0 yeah. release at the end of this year is the current plan. Thank you. OK, so um, I'm going to traverse to the lower, the middle, the Hold middle. On one left. second with that question. Hold on. Do them. I think he's actually is Dean. Can you please clarify? Do you mean three one of OpenShift or do you mean three one of CloudForms? Oh, sorry. Because we have a three. Ah, OpenShift three one. Right. It is so, yes. I'm sorry. It is planned for the OpenShift three dot one release because um, OpenShift three dot one comes out around the same time as the CloudForms four It but, will come out before it. But the dashboards will be in Manage IQ. But, and but that is correct. Right. Um, what the functionality that you're seeing right now is going to be within cloud forms and not within OpenShift. Right, and that would and that will all be part of um, Red Hat's cloud application suite as well. So you can correct. get OpenShift and cloud and cloud forms separately, but you can also get Red Hat application suite, cloud application suite. Sorry, and that will include that will bundle together a whole bunch of stuff. But part of that will also be. Um, cloud forms and OpenShift. That's correct. Yep. Thank you. Okay. So on the middle part of the page, on the on the left hand side, is node utilization. So we we have two utilization charts. The first one's CPU. So what it's telling you, I'm going to try to highlight this a little bit, is how much available you have, and and then what the um, donut chart is depicting um, the amount of used CPU. So what we're doing here is um, we're showing the used inside the donut chart. We're coloring the chart based on uh, two different thresholds. So the chart should be colored blue until you hit your warning threshold, which at this point we have 75%. And when it hits 75%, it's going to turn orange. But then once it hits 90%, like in this case it's 92, it turns red just to, so that the user can visually quickly identify, um, you know, threshold usage or where you've met your thresholds. On the bottom of this card is essentially the spark line. So the last 30 days, you know, what your CPU utilization has done for your nodes throughout the last 30 days. And then we have the same thing on the right hand side, but it's from memory. So it's the same, same exact concepts. The amount of available is, is um, up on the upper left. The amount used in the percentage is shown within the donut chart. And then underneath is the last 30 days with a spark line of usage. Um, so we just want to pause and ask for any questions. And I know on the chat there were some questions that came up. Um, one of the questions that came up is, will OpenShift have its own management console as well? Perhaps a stripped down version of this. And in with regards to that, OpenShift will have its own management console and it's targeted more towards a developer, whereas Manage IQ or CloudForms is more targeted towards the operations person or administrator. Now, the second question was asked will, by ENP, will you be providing support for installing OpenShift via CloudForms, i.e. within the services tab? And the plan is yes. Um, as of right now, CloudForms does support installing OpenShift v2. However, for v3, it is being planned, but I don't know the exact timelines yet. We're also talking about integrating OpenShift and install deployment through RHCI install. That is correct. Yeah. 
And let's see, did I miss anything else? Okay. Were there any other questions with regards to the prototype that you're seeing or some of the dashboards that Serena's showing? I have a question. The node and memory utilization, that's showing for utilization for uh, both uh, the entire environment, whether it's an OpenShift or Kubernetes uh, provider like environment, correct? In this screen, yes, it is. But we're going to okay. show it. We'll, we will show you a provider specific screen as well where it would be filtered. Okay. So I'm going to quickly go, keep monitoring if There's you see There's actually anything. one okay. question. This screen shows all the nodes. The nodes may be configured based on labels such as regions, zones, and maybe more. Because can this UI drill down and categorize based on those labels? What were the labels again? Um, so, uh, so these are related to services. Yeah. Um, not at this point. Not at this point. It is definitely in the works and plans. Okay, yeah, so remember that what we're looking at right now is just, it's a, it's all of your entire container environment, right? So I'm going to quickly show again, the bottom is utilization per node. So this is showing CPU utilization. What, we're, what we, we do here is we have one block to represent each node. Um, the way that it's ha sorted at this point is the nodes with the highest CPU utilization is on the upper left and, and um, colored red. And then as you go down to the bottom right, you see the ones that are have the less, have most available. Um, what we will also be able to do is you can hover over and see which, you'd be able to see the node names. You can also drill down. So if you wanted to look at the ones with the most problems or the highest utilization, you'd be able to drill down and see details of those specific nodes themselves. So again, at this point, we have this information available for CPU and memory. Um, in future, in future releases, once Kubernetes provides support, we'll also be including network and storage information in the same manner. Just to pause one more time, um, thank you, Scott, for your kind comments. He um, mentioned he liked the dashboard. It looks the look and feel is nice, easy to see, important top level information. Um, Veer Muchandi had a question: Can we add capacity, i.e., new nodes? based on thresholds set for utilization. For example, CPU utilization raises 75% spin up node time. Um, so with regards to that, and it sounds like it's a being able to scale out or scale up type question, the plan is to have that capability within cloud forms and I believe also within OpenShift. And from being able to visualize the threshold. We don't currently have that, but it's something we have planned for later. Um, the and also to be able to set the threshold to your desired values. Well, that's well. the scalability yeah. part yeah. and the policies. Yeah. Um, from Nicholas Schultz, will developers or users of OpenShift be able to gather stats from inside their Docker containers? Will they be able to monitor specific container performance? OpenShift, um, from OpenShift, I'm not certain. Steve, would you know? Um, yeah, that is definitely on the dashboard. I mean, dashboard. <laughs> um, it's definitely on the timeline for something that we know developers need access to see what is happening inside of their containers. So yeah, the developer dashboard over time will have some of those metrics for your projects and stuff happening inside of your projects. Great, thank you. And Dean Richardson asked, will this demo environment be available for essays in the field? If not, can demo flows via screenshots be made available? Yes. Uh, screenshots, yes. The demo environment, not yet. Mm -hmm. and, and so are we going to share the presentation there? This is re being recorded. Oh, right. So there's, so you, well, in the deck, also in the deck that we've created, I've, I've put these screenshots into that deck. Yeah, we can so. make the deck available as well. And we can put that in. We'll ask Diane where to put it. And then Jeff Hoffman has a question. When you scale down, will containers reorganize themselves across the environment, or is this still a manual effort? Um, that's a great question. I'm not really sure. I suspect it's a manual effort at this point. But Steve, would you know the answer to that question? 
I don't know the specific answer to that question, but um, my guess would be that that's more of a Kubernetes functionality since it's it's in charge of scheduling, right? So it's going to schedule what containers end up where. I don't know specifically though. Okay. And there's oh. another question. Um, actually, I think um, Kevin Connor made a comment that there's work going on to integrate Hocular for retrieving metrics. Some of that is supposed to be present for OpenShift Enterprise 3.1, and that's with regards to being able to set thresholds in order to scale, to scale up. Um, let me see. There's another question from Veer. Can we use Manage IQ to move the pods across nodes? Pods across nodes. Um, that's a good question. Um, I'm not sure just yet. I think that might be something that we can try to add to an as product management to see if that's something planned in the roadmap. Oh, and Kevin goes not auto scaling that is currently being discussed with Google. The intention is to include this for auto scaling, but likely OpenShift Enterprise 3.2. Thank you. Thank you. All righty, then we'll move on. Okay, so I'm going to go to the right half of the screen where we have two, we have uh, four cards that are showing trends. The first one is network utilization, and it's going to be a live chart. So what's going to happen in the last 15 minutes? So you, you should be able to see this moving, you know, at, when you when you have the, the sh your dashboard open. The next one is network utilization, but over the last 30 days. So um, this will be this chart will be actually very similar to what we have for memory and CPU. Um, the reason we don't have a donut chart showing your percentage um, available or percentage used is because right now we don't know how much is available from through Kubernetes. Um, and the bottom two items are the total number of pods and the total number of images and their trends throughout the last 30 days. So you'll be able to see. It, again, it's just the total number, not the not amount new or anything like that. It's the total num number that are um, existing on each one of those days. So what I'm going to go to next is the single provider. So for OpenShift, right? If you wanted, if you had a single OpenShift provider, the default view will be a dashboard or an overview, and it's essentially just the same thing as that global dashboard was but it's filtered for this specific OpenShift provider. So again, um, we could go through all the blocks, but I already <laughs> explained them all. Um, I'm gonna go, is there a question? Yes, okay. there is. Um, from Veer Machandi, the question is, can we drill down to the individual pod levels to see what containers a pod is running? Would we be able to look at JVM metrics running inside a container, for example? There are, there are assumptions that such features would be part of, would all be part of the CloudStorms console. Okay, so one of the things that we don't have access to in this demo today is there's a whole set of inventory views. So if you look up at, in, in this mock-up, in this prototype, if you look up to the top, container providers, projects, nodes, pods, routes, uh, replicators, images, registries, services, and containers, all of those things have we have inventory views for each of those. And yes, we'd be able to drill down from those directly from these areas. Uh, the caveat for us right now is that our dashboard prototype is in a different uh, code location than where our inventory views are being developed. So we don't have the ability to go from one to the other in this specific concept. So um, just to expand on what Serena mentioned in these inventory views, they were shown at the Red Hat Summit recently. I don't know if it was recorded or not. Do you know? Uh, that might, we, we can find out. It was Itamar's, yeah, I don't know. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure if there is, but one yeah. of the things we can do is have a follow-up discussion or presentation in this briefings to show um, those set of views to you. Now, with regards to being able to look at JVM metrics running inside the container, I know the plan is to be able to do that, and I know from a Hocular perspective or a Fabric 8 perspective, they actually do have a working prototype that does that. 
I'm just not sure on the timelines on how some of these land inside OpenShift. Any other questions? Um, okay. So I'm just showing you the alternate where if it's a Kubernetes provider, you can see the same thing. Um, at some point in the future, we will likely tailor the contents of these views to be a little bit different for the Kubernetes provider versus the OpenShift provider. But at this point today, we don't have those differences at this point. Um, the, final, the final one I'm going to show you is, uh, is the provider's, I'm sorry, the project dashboard. So if you, once you're looking at a single project, this is again what you'd be seeing from an overview perspective. Very similar layout, right? We have these cards again up on the top left, which are container related objects. So you have an idea of how many of them are associated with the project that you're looking at in context. And then we have the same thing, node utilization. So this is uh, CPU and memory utilization of the nodes that are associated with the project that you're looking at, as well as the heat maps again, um, utilization per node used by this project. We also have something a little bit different on the top right, which is quotas. And um, this might this piece up here might be re reworked a little bit. We might have some additional items or, or take some off as well. Um, but again, this is what we have uh, currently. And then the bottom four cards are exactly the same trend cards that we had on the global dashboards. But again, they're filtered um, in context to the project that you're looking at. So, are there any questions on the dashboard? Or comments? Or comments? Do folks have any thoughts around what they've seen or would like to see added? Are you grabbing those quotas from um, OpenShift directly? or Because you can also do quota management inside platforms today based on the, um, so I'm wondering if there's, tie, if there's a tie in for that. So or it's an excellent question. Uh, Lucy, with regards to the quotas, the quotas are actually the Kubernetes and OpenShift quotas, and they are not the quotas from uh, CloudForms. Um, Ian P asks, do we have table views as well as graphs? Yes, and those are in those inventory views. So actually, if that's something that's um, of interest to this, this audience, we could ask Diane if she wanted us to be, to come back and do another presentation and show you all this all the information that's available in the inventory views. But like I said, we don't have access to those at this moment. And um, we have another comment from Veer Machandi. Mounting persistent volumes to nodes could be a feature that can be added and monitoring usage of persistent volumes by OpenShift pods. I believe uh, Serena mentioned the plan is longer term to have storage and networking be more a part of what you've seen in the dashboards today. Um, currently, we don't have that capability or visibility, but the plan is to actually include them. Any other comments or questions? Uh, yeah, I had another question. And one of the things you can do in CloudForms is customize the dashboard based on any data that CloudForms con uh, collects. Is that something that uh, is, I assume that's not available now, but is that in the plans? In the future, Yes, that's a desire. The question is where, you know, what priority will that hold? Um, just, to, just to note that these dashboards are differently, are different than the, the containers, I'm sorry, than the CloudForms dashboard, where the CloudForms dashboards are actually running on reports, right? This is a little bit different. These are completely fixed and there are no, at this point, there are no reports associated with each of the individual cards that are shown on the dashboard. And one of the things that we probably should mention is we're using slightly different technologies from the native platforms to actually generate this dashboard. So today, as Serena mentioned, they're not customizable, but in the future, they likely will be. Sorry, I'm just going back to the presentations to see things moving around. Eric, what's up? Are you in a... Okay. So the, the last thing I wanted to show if there was no more questions is there, and this is, this is just a screenshot. Again, if we came back and wanted to show the, the uh, inventory views, maybe we could get a live view of this, um, this prototype as well. So this is essentially a topology view. 
um, and it's just showing all of the container related objects in a graph. Um, at this point, for the first release, uh, there's no plan to, well, we don't think that we'll be able to have um, highlighting, et cetera, of issues or errors or things being up or down, but that's something that we are talking about enhancing in the future. Um, when pods or containers are, are created or instantiated, you see them automatically appear here. The way that they've implemented it at this time is they kind of jiggle around a little bit so your eye is, is, is brought to it and, it, and, and you can see it. Um, this same topology view is going to be, or a very similar version, is going to be also included in satellite. Um, yeah, in, sat in cockpit. Sorry. In cockpit. cockpit. Sorry about that. Um, so I don't know if anybody has any comments on this, on this type of view as well. It seems like there's um, people have strong stances for and against. So if anybody has any feedback, we'd love to hear it on that as well. So while, we'll, while we wait for a few more questions, there are some questions from Judd at Dell. And the question is, can code push events be correlated with performance data? And the answer to that is absolutely. We are collecting event data, and that is going to be in Cloud Forms or Manage IQ. And whatever performance data that can be collected can be correlated as of right now, because we don't have that much data we're not able to produce those set of uh, reports or charts to show, but that's something that we do plan for longer term. Now from Veer Machandi, the question is, or comment was, pruning resources on nodes is another feature that will be useful for administrators if it's made available via this console. And uh, we absolutely agree with you, and I believe that's part of the active management piece of um, lifecycle management of a containerized environment. And today, uh, we don't yet have those set of use cases addressed, but it's something being planned. And um, with regards to container update events, those are definitely related to code push events. And on the dashboard, do we have any? I think. Not right now. Not, not right now. No. Sorry, and I forget what we don't that have. Is the future, um, so that's sure. something that we're planning for the future. Yeah. And another comment from Beer is maybe coloring the node circles on the topology view based on usage labels, grouping related nodes by regions, zones, etc., will be useful. Yeah. So just so you know, yeah, we have been talking about how we design um, for usage because color. Because, because of colorblind issues, I'm not sure that we can just primarily uh, count on the color itself, but we have definitely been talking about those concepts. Also, how you filter by labels, et cetera, regions and zones, that's something that we've been talking about. At this point, I'll, I, I don't want to detract from what we've done here because I think it's great, it's a great first step. But at this point, all you can do is either toggle, you can toggle these types to be shown or not. So continue, that's what this bar here is up here on the left, top left. Um, if you don't want to see your container groups, you can toggle it off, et cetera. So it's, it, that filtering is pretty limited at this point, but it's definitely going to be enhanced as we go along. Serena, can I'm you sorry. maximize that again, please? Oh, sure. I'm sorry. For folks who are looking at this presentation, how would you use this topology view? Do you have a need for such a view? Um, and so in looking at this topology view, one of the things I think that would be nice is if you could show dynamic connections between services, right? So I'm assuming, like, I can't quite, oh, so there's the node and it's got, there's this, there's this long graph coming out of the center of the, the middle left node, where it's got a lot of stuff coming out of it. Do you see that one? Yeah, no, the one up. Up here. No. Oh, oh a new, according to this graph, there's a node coming out of a node or they're connected through, they're on the same host. Is that what's happening? Um, I don't get what, I don't get that graph. But I anyway. I think it's a little confusing right so now. So here, yeah. yeah. So, so this, yeah, this host, this host has two VMs associated, right? With it? Yep. Yep. And then, so you're asking about this node here. Well, what I was what I was actually 
talking about more. I thought that was actually one node and a long graph coming off of it with a lot of services. Okay. If, if, if services are talking to each other, it would be good as the admin to know what services are talking to which services and how much data is flowing between them. In some other dashboards I've used, these are more app application developer dashboards. You can actually see like how much data is flowing from your app servers to your database. Right, but I would imagine as an admin, if there's a bunch of nodes talking to a bunch of other nodes or services even within the same node talking to each other, you might want to move those to other nodes because you want to share the load around. You don't want it all on one node. I, it's just something I think the interaction between the nodes is the between the endpoints of the graph is important. Um, yes, we've heard that, and that's something that we're definitely planning. Um, let me ask you this: Would it be better to have the um, services or a specialized view that's more targeted between these service endpoints to actually see that information or would you still want to see it with all these other entities connected to it i would imagine for sure you'd want to see it on a node but on a node basis as well though right because it's not just which ser i do want to see which service is talking to which service but as an uh, as an admin i would imagine i would also want to see are these co-located on the same node are they in the same district like i would want to know more of how that I don't know that I need all the graphs. It's kind of hard. Let's see, containers. I think I'd probably want to mean, I think I'd kind of want to see all of that stuff. Maybe they become smaller or something, but you'd still want to be able to know, are they happening on the same machines or what's the relationship between quote unquote machines? But yeah. I'll leave that up to other people to say. Some of the other things we're talking about is being able to put something in, you know, like more in context. So you're, you want to see, you want to see your environment based on a specific node or on a specific um, hierarchy, potentially. Yeah. And so it would kind of fade everything out, but it bring up any of the relationships associated with that one object in the front. So that's another thing that the feature we're talking about and implementing. And just to pause for one moment, Bob Kuzdemba had a question. Can the topology be, view be cropped and zoomed? Not at this point. That is the intention going forward. I mean, we we would not promise that for the first release. Say that. <laughs> right. I I think one of the caveats we probably should mention is this topology view is sort of an early concept for it, and we're still in very early stages of it. We'd lo definitely love to get more input on it, and. Um, so if you have any additional comments, we'd love to hear them or things that we ought to be doing. Actually, as per this, per this specific view, um, at ContainerCon next week, Alyssa Bonus from uh, Red Hat is going to be demoing the slide. Um, so I don't know if anybody is there. Feel free to go see that. Right. And that's next week at uh, ContainerCon yep. in Seattle. Um, Bob also mentioned this topology view will be useful for large environments. And um, Vera asked, it is showing containers at the bottom level. Is that a pod? Oh, um, one of the what? things we yeah. should mention yeah. in the uh, topology view is that where you see the word container groups, that's actually pods. And um, we have some terminology things that we still have to update. And um, somebody asked a question, combine topology with heat, if not already. Yeah. Um, we've heard that. And thank you for that comment. So that was the last slide that we had in our deck. Um, again, I'm not sure if there's any other comments. We'd be happy to answer them. Otherwise, I think we can pass it back on to Steve. Um, one comment. When you have the type of container info, perhaps the container can indicate what is running there. That's right. Um, so one of the things to mention in the live demo mm -hmm. is that we actually do have some views where if you're clicking on the object you can actually see details information about um, the object so for example if you're clicking on a container you should be able to see information about the image and other information about the containers and 
because we don't have the live working uh, prototype, we're not able to show that to you, but I believe there is a cockpit recording that actually does show that. And if folks are interested in that recording, um, we're happy to send the link to, to you. Um, I'm going to type in our email address in the chat and um, please feel free to reach out to us if you'd like. And if you have any additional comments or questions, Okay, looks like we're done. Let's give it one more second. Okay. Um, those dotted oh, lines. I'm sorry. Those dotted lines. Were they? What were they for? Were they for just services only? In that topology view. I think in that topology view, some of them only had dotted lines, not solid lines. Sorry. No, I have to read. Yeah. You have to oh, share because I, I don't think anyone can oh, see. Sorry. Sorry no, 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 that. thank I, you. I um, we're trying to get the uh, image shared again. Oh, yes, I believe those dotted lines basically means we've lost connection to it or something um, is unavailable. And that's the same thing of the ones that are not connected, I guess. They're either not connected, orphaned, or they've lost connection. There could be a number of different reasons. Okay. And um, would I, if I hover over like the containers and the nodes and services, would I be able to see the actual names of them, or are they or, like any more detail info, info? Like if I hover over them? Yeah. At this point, you see the name. What we're trying to do, I'm, I'm not sure how much will be done for this first release or not. Um, there's also a design that when you select one, you'll see all of the associated information on the right. There'd be like a details panel that shows up, um, which shows you all the information associated with it. Doesn't cockpit have cockpit that? already implemented that? Okay, so yeah. if you if you look at some of the cockpit recordings, and I believe those are already in the public space, you should mm -hmm. be able to see that information. And this topology view is actually based on that implementation that was done in the cockpit. So some of these capabilities will be coming. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? And Veer, thank you. And thank you everybody for taking the time out of your busy schedule to take a look at what we had to share. Yep. Thanks, Julian and Serena. Um, we'll be posting this. Um, Di I, we will. I'll, when I say we, I mean Diane. Diane okay. will be uh, posting this up on YouTube. And again, thanks for showing us some of the exciting things coming for Kubernetes and OpenShift. Great. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Have a Bye, great everybody. day. Bye-bye.